everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review. And for today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new DC Comics Multiverse 6 inch Suicide Squad movie Rick Flag figure from Mattel. Now, this figure comes packaged in the same style of packaging we've been seeing with all the multiverse. You've got the red box with the black highlights. Up at the very top, you've got the Suicide Squad movie logo, and it's the logo in the multiple colors with the little smiley face in the Q. Then you've got the DC Comics Multiverse logo. The figure's clearly displayed in the window box. And then down below, you have an image of the character from the movie and the name of the character. Off to the side, you've got another image of the character from the movie. And then on the back of the packaging, we have a look at the actual figure and then off to the side we have a look at the other figures in the line. Now you'll notice Diablo up at the top. So both Diablo and this figure are actually Walmart exclusive figures so you will only see these at Walmart. They do not have any kind of collecting connect piece so no croc pieces with these figures. I'll be looking at Diablo probably tomorrow or, or early next week. And then the other figures are just the regular figures in this line. Two of which have yet to be released. Boomerang and Katana have yet to be released. Okay so let's get this open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figure outside of the packaging along with the other contents. So as I mentioned, this figure does not come with any kind of collecting connect piece. However, you do get a number of weapon accessories with this figure. You get this machine gun, and this is just done in a black plastic. There's no paint detail on this. The sculpting's pretty good on it overall. You've got the scope, and you've got the little magazine with some sculpting lines on there. So the overall sculpting's nice, but again, very little in the way of paint application on any of these weapon accessories. You get this larger rifle, looks like some kind of shotgun or something, and again, pretty nice detailing with the sculpting but it's just a straight black plastic then you get a little pistol again straight black plastic and then you get this knife now this does have uh, the handle is a, a lighter almost olive green dark olive green color and then the blade is is black and then of course you have the little china writing on it like we often see with Mattel figures and you can put the weapons in either hand he's got pretty solid grip hands for holding the weapons and then he also has a place to store the the pistol. He has a working gun holster here on his belt so you can stick the, the pistol in there if you want to. And it fits in there pretty tight. And then he also has a place here on his vest that you can slide the knife into. And if you have the dead shot figure, then you might want to give one of these rifles to him since they were pretty skimpy on the weapons with the dead shot figure only giving him this little cheesy uh, gun and not a rifle. For the figure itself, I think they've actually done a pretty nice job with the face sculpt. It's not 100% to the actor's likeness, but it's close enough that you can tell who it is. Now, the paint applications, the skin maybe is a little bit on the pale side, and then this one eye, the right eye, looks a little bit off to me. Um, you got a little glimmer of like a white in the pupil on the left eye, which I think looks better, whereas on the right eye, it's just a straight color. So when you look at it close up, dead on, it, it looks a little bit off, but not too bad. And then he's got the goatee which I think looks good and the hair is sculpted pretty good and it's just a brown color. It looks like maybe they've got some wash in the hair so you do have some uh, darker colors to give it added texture in the hair. Then he's got just this beige shirt. This vest piece is a separate piece. Now I don't think it's meant to be removed. I did kind of pull it out like this so you can see but it looks like it was glued so I don't and this side looks like it's glued as well so I don't think this is really meant to be removed. You, you can if you really want to. I don't know Know once you remove it how well it's going to stay on the figure if you try and put it back on there but it is a separate piece and it's just that kind of rubber material and then the belt is also a separate piece that same kind of rubber material and he's got these magazines on the side and on the back and then he's got this little walkie talkie now the the antenna of the walkie talkie gets bent because it pushes up against the vest and it's just again a very soft kind of rubber material so expect that to probably be bent when you take it out of the packaging and then he's just got these dark olive almost gray type pants he's got this black marking very basic paint applications but you know that's pretty typical with these lines and then he's got the dark gray boots and he's got some laces sculpted on the boots so this figure stands close to about six and a quarter inches tall 
And then here's a comparison with the other Suicide Squad movie figures that have been released up to this point. So articulation is pretty much on par with what we've seen with the other figures in the line. You can turn the head to the left and to the right. You can't, he has really no up or down movement with the head. Arms attached with the standard ball hinge joint at the shoulder so he can get his arm out good. He's got good rotation there. He's got a bicep swivel. He's got a single hinged elbow so he can only bend his elbow about that much. Does have swivel at the elbow. Has swivels at the wrist but no hinges on the hands. Has um, an ab crunch joint there so but it is limited with this vest that he wears so he can only crunch down about that much and he can only look back about that much he also has a waist swivel he has those side hinge joints for the legs so he can do the splits about that much and then he can get his leg forward and then he can do his leg back pretty good he does have a thigh swivel he's got a single hinge knee so he can bend his knee about that much and then he's got the hinges on the feet so he's got up and down movement with the feet but no rotation and no ankle pivot and two peg holes on the bottom of the feet. Okay, so that's my review. So overall, I would say if you've been enjoying the Suicide Squad line from Mattel, then this is one I think you'll definitely want to add to your collection. I think the face sculpt is pretty good overall. Basic paint applications, and I like the fact that you get a number of weapon accessories with this figure. And I also like the fact that you have they've given you a working gun holster and a place to put the knife. That being said, if you don't like, if you haven't been liking these 6-inch Mattel figures, then I don't think this is one you're going to like any better. It has the same kind of articulation which is definitely the weakest thing about the figure I definitely think Mattel could use uh, to add some more articulation to these figures things like uh, double hinged elbows double hinged knees ankle pivot and, and hinges on the hands would be nice but as it is like I said if you've been collecting this line and and you've been enjoying it then I think this is one you'll definitely want to add to your collection so as I mentioned at the beginning this figure is a Walmart exclusive along with the Diablo figure we'll have a full gallery of images up at Toy News I.com. There'll be a link in the video description below. As always, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If you're so inclined, please like the video. Also, if you haven't already, please follow me on my Facebook and or Twitter pages. I'll have links to those in the video description below. And until next time, I'll catch you later.